Hello and welcome to another video and today we're finally doing something that isn't career mode on MotoGP20. I thought I'd give it a bit of a shake up. I'll maybe only do career mode videos once every two days or maybe I'll do two videos a day. I'm still trying to work out sort of how I'm going to approach it but today we're doing the historical challenges. Obviously we've just been doing a lot of these on MotoGP19 but these are different this time so hopefully they'll be a little less tedious. But welcome to the historic MotoGP20 mode. Choose your favourite rider and tackle the new challenges offered every day. The greater the difficulty level chosen, the greater the reward will be. Every time you reach the podium in one of the challenges, you will gain access to the historic market. The rewards available will change every time. Do your best to unlock the riders and the most iconic teams of MotoGP history. So the rewards are divided into four levels of rarity, common, uncommon, rare and ultra rare. The challenges and rewards are updated every day and also every time that you reach the podium in a race. The more you play, the more the possibility of finding the rarest rewards will increase. The price of the rewards varies. Use a pinch of strategy to unlock them at the right time. So then we just sort of get set a random race to do every day. And it changes every time we do one. And basically we do that until we lock everything here. There is 77 different things we can unlock here. If I've just added that up correctly, I hope I have. 41 and 36 is 77 as far as I'm aware. So we'll head straight into the difficult challenge. This one is at Kota, so that's going to play into our favour a bit. Seven laps, conditions clear, difficulty extreme, 120, and it's in the four strokes. So hopefully we don't fall too far behind on this, because I've not ridden the four strokes before in the game. But anyway, we'll head straight into it, hopefully it goes well. Oh yes, we can actually pick the rider, so obviously out of the riders we've got, we've not got many people. So there's uh, Spider-Man Melandry, there's Colin Edwards on the Fiat, so the 2007, yeah. Uh, then there's Rossi 2002 and Rossi 2003, the Austin Powers version. If we go across, we can be our custom riders. So we can ride the Austin Powers, we can un we can ride the Reps Honda, or we could ride just the regular Fiat Yamaha team 2007, or we can ride the Colin Edwards version, or we can ride the Spider-Man version. But we'll be the official riders. It picked us a Spider-Man Melandry to begin with, so I think we will pick Spider-Man Melandry. Everything on here looks to be okay. So we'll start the challenge then. Hopefully we can try and get first place. So there's a nice change of pace compared to obviously MotoGP 90 and the historical challenges. They just set a scenario for you. You have to just go ahead and do it. Whereas here, it's just sort of random races you get to do. So we just get to do different races as different people. I won't, I'll won't. i pick different riders for each episode. Don't worry about that. Sometimes it'll be the two strokes. Sometimes it'll be the four strokes. I think that it varies the challenges. So it's a seven lap race, so I'll stick a medium tyre in the rail, so you don't want to go for a soft. And without further ado, we will start the race. We have to start from sixth place, so we're not actually starting last, that's quite interesting. So yeah, we'll head straight into this. So Nicky Hayden on pole then, Toro Okara alongside him, same with Barros as well next to him. He's got the manual start. Lights out and away we go. We've had a pretty good start. So we go down towards turn one. We hit the front as Melandri, but Ukar was trying to go on the outside. Ukar was pushed Hayden wide. The rear end is stepping out on this thing. Maybe I need to change the power mode back down to one. I'll turn the traction control back up to three as well as we go through turn two. So we now are leading here in the first historical challenge. Oh, okay. What was that? Oh, wow. All right. What happened there? I'm totally... I'm out. I'm literally out of the race. What is... Okay. Huh. The fourth and final free practice session of this weekend has only just come to a close. We already have some idea of who might be favourites for the upcoming qualifying sessions. Right, so that's really strange because we've just had a weird crash that I don't understand. And then Keith has just called this free practice. I'm very confused at what's going on right now. We're going to do that one again, but I want to have a look at what actually happened to our bike there. We just got flung off into oblivion, and it gave our bike terminal damage and went out straight away. So we're coming down the hill then. The front forks have bottomed out. That's the rear suspension is also compressed. And the rear's just come around. It sent us up into the air. See, pretty bad high side, very high speed. The bike's gone down here, he's just skidding, Melandry's gone straight into the wall, and boom, his bike's followed him, absolutely written off there, absolutely destroyed, and that's us out of the race, but wow, that was, that was unexpected. 
So we're trying again then. Hopefully we don't get absolutely destroyed this time. Lights and away we go once again. Trying to get after another good start as we go towards turn one. We should be able to take the lead because obviously we know we can because we did last time. Got the inside of your car, although we've broke a little later for the first corner. The rear is still trying to come around on us. I think the medium rear is just really cold at the start. That might be part of the problem. Obviously, there's a little bit of a strange crash still with the forks bottoming out. And the rear suspension obviously compressed a lot as well. But we do lead once again. We obviously know we're not going to sort of make the same mistake we made before. Through turn six and now. The bike is understanding a bit. Bayless and Vermeulen and two Australians battling over 11th place. So Barros is once again second behind us. We've got almost half a second to him, which is obviously not a lot. Especially after the first sector of Kota. Usually have a bit more time into the AI than that. We got a bit wide. I'm going to just lift through here. Yeah, there we go. We got through the corner this time. We didn't get absolutely thrown into oblivion. So we go into turn 11 then. Fire out a bit of a wheelie. Looking behind. We put a bit of time into Barros here. We are getting away from him slightly. We've got one second lead now. Oh, the rear end is really sliding. This medium rear is not happy at all. Obviously, you don't get a massive amount of feeling on the front end either from the from the game this year. That is obviously that's one slight criticism I've got. You don't get much feeling at all from the bike. Which is nice because sometimes you get more realistic front end crashes where they just kind of shock you, which is what happens in real life sometimes. But you have very, very little feeling. So we've actually got 20 riders in the race. I think that's all the historic riders then in this one race. The front end really took in there into the last corner. But we've got a bit of a lead. But it is the first lap, of course. It's always easy to put time into the AR on the first lap. Interesting to see that uh, Roberts Jr.'s uh, little tag is at KRJ rather than Roberts. It's quite interesting. Obviously his father raced as well, with Kenny. I don't know why I said father, I could have said dad, but oh well. I'm maxing out on this straight again. Really maxing out here. Oh, I've done a massive stop here. We're probably going to lose the front into turn 12. We've gone massively off, just because I wanted to not lose the front. That's probably going to cost us quite a bit of time to the AI. Over the line there, 205.8 on that lap. How far are we in front now? We've got two and a half seconds of Barros behind. So we are extending a gap. Probably Austin is not a good track for them to give a challenge to really because the AI just are so bad at Austin. I mean at least these historical challenges aren't like the old ones where the AI run about 2% so you could pull away uh, really easily. So I've only gained 2 seconds in about a lap rather than a corner. Right coming towards the line to end the third lap. We've got even further ahead of Barros. 205.4 on that lap. We've now got 3.4 seconds behind him. Seems like in this game as soon as you get ahead of the AI they just drop back so much. And obviously we started six, so it's not even like we started first. We literally had to get past them, but they just all got such a bad start. We passed them into the first corner, and that was it. On the end of lap four, then Barros seems to have broken clear from the other AI, and I think he's on his way because he's caught us up a little bit. Yeah, the gap's 3.1 now. Barros has really gapped the other guys, and he is coming after me. This could be an interesting finish yet. All right, coming up towards the line to start the penultimate lap. We're actually running out of fuel. We've just done a new fastest lap, though. We responded to Barros on that lap. How far are we in front now? 3.9. So we have extended the gap again. We've got two laps to go. But I've now got to go into fuel saving mode. So maybe Alex can actually come and get us. Right, it's so coming over the line. Well, over the line to start the final lap now. We are very marginal on the fuel, but we had saved a little bit. I'm going to have to save some more, it seems. We've got 3.9 seconds to Barros. He actually didn't close on us at all on that lap. So that's going to go well. But we've gone really wide into turn one. We've gone really wide, but I don't think four seconds is going to come off on this lap. Coming into the last corner then, we have absolutely destroyed the AI in this challenge here, mainly because it's at Texas. But here we go, Melandri comes up to the line, and we're going to win the first historical challenge. So then, Barros and Hayden, the only other two riders in the 205s it seems. Some of them are really so. Caparossi was 33 seconds off. Ukawa dropped to 19th, didn't he start first? I'm pretty... Oh, actually, I think he started second. But wow, Ukawa did not have a good race. But we absolutely dominated that race then in the end. Obviously, we only won by 3.1. But Barros took a big breakaway from everybody else behind. So, fair play to Barros. But we unlocked 15,000 diamond. That's the uh, currency. So, I'm not sure what happens next after this. I think we get taken to this market. And we can have a look who we want to buy. So, yes, then we're now up to 15,000 diamonds. Right then. So, there are three people we can buy here. So, we can buy the Team Roberts Yamaha for 19.93, which is common. The 19.99 McDuin. Or the 2004 Capo Rossi. 
I don't know if we can buy several, but the 2004 Caparossi is the cheapest one, so we might as well go for that. Should we get them all? I think I'll get them all. And there we go. So we're now down to 10,200 diamond. So I think then that's pretty much where I'll end the video off. Hope you did enjoy that one. It wasn't the most interesting race, of course, because we pulled away at the front, but obviously we had the weird crash in the first race. I still don't really understand exactly what happened with it, but quite interesting nonetheless. Uh, we obviously did get a bit of fuel trouble at the end. That bike was... Well, I'd say the bike was not fuel efficient. It's just because it, it sick the gear was way too short. So when we were going down the straight, I was on the rev limit for about three seconds a lap. Just like in the highest gear. So I was using so much fuel then. So I went into power mode zero, saved what I thought was enough. And then it still looked pretty marginal. So I had to save even more. But uh, in the end, Barros couldn't close up to us. So I guess it wasn't really a big problem. But like I said, I hope you did enjoy that one. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you're all staying safe, and I shall see you in the next video.